want to thank all of you for attending this testimonial and farewell dinner in honor of our general manager who's retiring, Mr. Anthony Andrews. Tony, as he's known to all of us, was general manager when I bought this dealership five years ago and has been an extremely valuable asset to me. I had lunch with Tony the other day, and I asked him, what do you consider the most important factor in building and keeping a clientele? And he told me that it was something that he had practiced since day one on the job with this dealership. I think that there's a lesson in his story for all of us. So, since I was going to ask Tony to say a few words anyway, I'd like him to tell you the same story he told me that day at lunch. You have the floor, Tony. Well, thank you. I'm very honored that so many of you have turned out to say goodbye to me. It gives me the opportunity to thank each and every one of you for the help you've given me in making my job a lot easier. I think that the single most important element through the years is the mutual belief by the whole crew that the only way to build and keep customers is to make sure they receive the proper care. And each and every one of you has to do his part in the daily practice of customer care. You know, there's a word around these days, consumerism that's getting a lot of the public's attention. Now, basically, it means engaging in activities in the interest of consumer protection. To you and me, it simply means taking care of customers and their cars. And as employees of this dealership, you and I have been practicing consumerism right along. You all know that Chrysler Corporation has a list of credits in the interest of consumer protection as long as your arm. Now, actually, Chrysler Corporation has taken the initiative in pollution, safety, warranty, and many other consumer benefits. Now, on a personal basis, taking care of customers started with me when I went to work at the dealership back in 1935. The country was just coming out of the Depression, and jobs weren't too plentiful. I hired in as an all-around helper in the service department. Part of my job was getting new cars ready for delivery. The service manager always asked the sales department to notify us in advance when customers were coming in to take delivery. Now, back in those days, new car prep wasn't the operation it is today. But we'd wash the car, put the license plates on, and have it ready for pickup so the customer wouldn't have to wait while these things were being done. I used to do a lot of car jockeying back in those days also. When I moved a car that had just been serviced, I always check to make sure that the outside door handles, the steering wheel, or any other part of the car didn't have any grease spots that the owner would get on his hands when he got into the car. Another thing that I always checked for was floor mats that had dirt on them from the technician's shoes. I didn't find it too often because the boss at that time was a stickler for cleanliness. He kept his cleaning crew busy making sure the whole service area was spick and span. Now, this not only kept the grease off the mats, but there was another reason. Customers are impressed with attractive, clean-looking places of business. It's human nature to want to do business in pleasant surroundings. On the other hand, people tend to take a negative attitude if the surroundings are unattractive and messy. I figured if I did my part to keep the dealership clean, the customers would keep coming back, and my job would be that much more secure. Well, after a while, I was allowed to work on the lube rack. What I learned there could be helpful to you, too. Whenever you get under a car, always make a quick inspection tour for other areas that need service or that are potentially hazardous. Always note these conditions on the repair order before you return it to the shop foreman so he can notify the owner. You'd be surprised at the number of owners that thanked us for this little service. And they were pretty definite about the fact that they wouldn't hesitate to return for any service that they might need in the future. Which proves what I've always said. A satisfied customer is a steady customer. I've never regretted the decision to make a career of the automotive service business. I figured that with more and more improvements in the automobile, there was going to be a greater need for good service. Now, come to think of it, that applies even more today. About the same time, I made another decision that I've never regretted either. Of course, being married meant other things.
other things. And the bills that go along with them. But car sales were really climbing. And there was a need for more help to service them. So I got a lucky break and was promoted to full-fledged mechanic. <laughs> well, we weren't called technicians in those days. The service bay I was assigned to was right next to Hank, the top mechanic in the dealership. Hank was a real pro and acted like it. I'm not saying he was a prima donna. It's just that he practiced certain things that made him a pro. Professionalism is never out of date, and it applies the same today as it did in 1939. Part of it was attitude. Hank took a lot of pride in his work, and he instilled that same sense of pride in me. It wasn't long before he had convinced me that as a technician, I was performing a very vital service to car owners because they relied on me for dependability and safety in their automobiles. There was one term back in those days that Hank couldn't stand to hear. That term was grease monkey. And Hank did everything in his power to get people to stop thinking of mechanics in that term. And Hank started with cleanliness. This was the way he put it. If we don't want people calling us grease monkeys, we shouldn't look the part. People only call them as they see them. Aside from that, there's a good chance that they'll associate sloppy looks with sloppy work, and that would have really bugged him. So, Hank made sure that both his personal appearance and work area were as neat as possible. And with a laundry service, wiping cloths, and washroom facilities you guys have today, there's no reason to lose a customer by being sloppy. And the easiest way is to let some of your carelessness rub off on him, or worse yet, her. The next most important thing to Hank was his attitude toward customers. Back in those days, customer contact with a technician was pretty common. Aside from being extremely courteous to them, Hank made sure that he always put in a good word about the product. Hank figured that if he grumbled about how many jobs just like this one he had had in one month, or how troublesome the car was to work on, he might plant a few doubts that could cost the dealership a customer. The customer might think that the problem was caused by poor design, and feel that he didn't get as much for his money as he would have from some other make. On the other hand, he might also think that if the car is so hard to work on, he may be paying more for service than he would with some other make. On top of that, he may complain about these things to his neighbors. So Hank always kept a positive attitude about the product, mainly because Hank was already thinking about a repeat sale, and therefore a repeat service customer, plus potential new business from the customer's friends, if they had heard good things instead of bad. A few years later, Hank decided to hang up his wrenches and retire. We were all sorry to see him go. And instead of the usual retirement dinner, we gave him a rousing send-off party by taking him out on the town to see his favorite, Benny Goodman. The following Monday, the boss held a service department meeting. He told us that over the weekend, he had compiled a list of the things that had made Hank a pro, and more important, kept the customers coming back. He went through them, and said he expected all of us to follow them to the letter. They were professional attitude, pride in workmanship, neat appearance, attention to detail, faith in the product, and above all, courtesy to the customer. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that still applies today. In fact, today it's even more important. It concerns not only technicians, but everybody in the dealership. And I don't mind telling you, it pays off in spades. It not only keeps present clientele, but also helps build new service business. How about that time? situation got a little sticky. Those of you that can remember World War II know what I'm talking about. It wasn't long before they closed down production of automobiles except for wartime use. <laughs> you talk about a time when service was important? 
Everyone, all of a sudden, wanted their cars to be in top-notch shape to last the duration. Of course, we could handle only so much. But at that time, people were especially fickle. So we had to do our darndest to keep them happy. And every customer that wasn't completely satisfied didn't come back for future service work. And today, you guys are fighting your own running war with all the new specialty shops that are springing up all over the place. So, it's easy to lose a customer who is primarily interested in prompt, courteous service, but doesn't get it. Uh, speaking of service, it wasn't very long before I received my greetings from Uncle Sam. And for the time being, my career was interrupted. Well, after the big war was over, I came back and picked up where I'd left off. In my absence, I'd lost some of my steady customers to the boys who'd stayed behind. But it was only a matter of time until the auto plants were back in operation. And I had plenty of opportunity to start building a new following. Everybody was just itching to get their hands on a new car. But I found that I had a little more competition in my trade. A lot of the boys returning from the war had gone in right out of high school, and it never worked. And they were looking for jobs in droves. I had a little bit of an edge on them because of my experience. But there was another ace in the hole I was really counting on. I had every intention of continuing to practice the professional attitude and customer care just as in the past. In fact, it seemed so important that I felt the whole dealership should practice it. So I started my own little crusade. Every time one of the boys came over to me for a little help on some job, I gave them whatever assistance I could, plus a little pep talk on professional attitude and customer care. And after a while, it became contagious, and it reflected in the dealership sales. As for technical assistance, we got a helping hand when the Master Technician Service Conference was introduced in 1947. As you well know, it's still in existence after 24 years. It's an effective way for new technicians to increase their knowledge of the automobile. For you old pros, it's an excellent means to keep informed of the operation and maintenance of new components. Actually, the Master Tech program is valuable to the service write-up crew, the parts department, yes, even the sales department. For example, sometimes the write-up man or service salesman can increase his service savvy and make his diagnosis not only easier, but more accurate. Of course, this eliminates irritated customers and comebacks by making sure the proper service is performed the first time the car is brought in. The parts department should be aware of new and fast-moving items that should be ordered and stocked. Many master tech sessions introduce new repair kits or redesigned parts that the parts man should be familiar with. The sales department can gain a lot of technical knowledge about new features and optional equipment to help sell them to the customers. And speaking of selling customers, the sales department can sell all the cars in the world. But until that customer is sold, we haven't done our job as a team to assure repeat sales and generate new sales. Once the car is sold, the ball is in our hands to sell the customer with good service. I repeat, Keeping the customer sold is just as important as selling the car. And it'll be a snap if we all practice what Hank did. Professional attitude, pride and workmanship, neat appearance, attention to detail, faith in the product, and above all, courtesy to the customer. Along about 1950, our write-up man left, and the boss offered me a shot at his job. This was a good opportunity to broaden my service experience by dealing directly with customers. Now, one of the important things I learned as a write-up man was nobody likes to be ignored. If a customer can't be taken care of right away, make it a point to acknowledge his presence and tell him that he'll be taken care of as soon as possible. Another important thing is to listen carefully to what the customer tells you and to question him further if the condition he has described is not quite clear or if there are other symptoms he may not have noticed that will make your diagnosis more on target. The technician that was assigned to the job was reminded to keep his eyes open for any additional service that should be done. 
This way, the customer could be contacted by phone to sell the additional service and to make sure he could afford the extra time the car would be tied up. Nothing irks a customer more than his car not being ready when it was promised. I made a regular check of work in progress to make sure I could meet my promises to the customers. If not, I immediately notified them in advance and explained the reason for the delay. Along about that time, we set aside a convenient, well-lit parking area for service customers. We had a diagram of the parking area made up with a hook for the car keys on each space. The car was always delivered to the customer if help was available. But if it wasn't, at least the customer could be told exactly where his car was. This way, customers weren't all over the place looking for their car. This was one service that the customers really appreciated. In 1955, I was promoted to parts and service manager. Wow, talk about responsibility. Up to this point, I had always found the service rep to be a mighty handy technical expert. I could always count on him to bail us out on an unusually tough mechanical problem or a sticky customer complaint. To make sure that I didn't overload the service rep with mechanical problems that were my responsibility, I made sure that all service bulletins were circulated throughout the service and parts department and that there were plenty of service manuals on hand for them to use. It didn't take me long to learn that in addition to being a darn good nuts and bolts troubleshooter, our parts and service rep could also help me solve any management problems that cropped up in either the parts or service department. The service rep can help the parts department with advice on the latest parts inventory and ordering methods. The more you do to improve parts department operation, the less chance of a customer being without his car due to a part not being available. What it all boils down to is that the parts and service rep is at your disposal to help the dealership run as smooth as possible. For instance, if any additional training beyond the master tech program is needed, the service rep should be notified. He can and will arrange for any training a technician may require, whether it's from a mobile unit or training center. Well, that uh, just about covers what Mr. Simmons and I discussed the other day. However, before I go, I'd like to stress a few points. First of all, you people in the service departments that support the dealership wouldn't be in business if there weren't cars being sold. So obviously, selling the car is the first step. But remember, keeping the customer sold is just as important as selling the car. And the only way to keep him sold is through customer care. And that means only one thing, service and since most of you in attendance tonight are directly connected with customer service, I hope you don't feel that I was too hard on you. Good service to customers depends on everybody in the dealership. And I mean everybody. From the switchboard operator who takes the customer's call to the cashier who takes his money. To wind up, I think you know that I even spent a few years in the sales department before becoming general manager of this dealership. I learned that a lack of communication between the sales department, new car prep, and service departments can raise heck with customer relations. Through the years, I've kept notes of all the little things I picked up that promote customer care. I've had them all typed up and put into this binder as a personal customer care manual for this dealership. It's uh, my going away present to you. And I hope that all of you will take the time to read it and practice the things that apply to you. Customer care is the best way I know of to keep the customer sold after the car is sold. Thank you very much. Good luck and goodbye.